What's up guys, welcome to another Critique the Community. Today we're gonna to be critiquing architectural photography with the master himself, Mike Kelly. Tomorrow, Patrick and I are heading down to South America with Elia to work on photographing the world for. Yes, we're doing more of them. People love them, so we're gonna keep doing them. And uh, so the next critique, which you can sign up for right now, is going to be on landscape cityscape photography. And we're going to get Elia to critique your images with us. So if you'd like to submit images for the very next critique, go to the link in the description below and you can do that right now. Now, Mike, the last time you were here, we probably didn't have like the- We didn't even do one of the, I think the last architectural photography we did was in Denver, like two or three years ago, wasn't it? Okay, well that makes me feel better. I was worried <coughs> that we had just recently done it, but I was going to say that we've moved over to a new system on F-stoppers okay. where you can actually rate the images and we're giving away two free tutorials now. Yeah. The first one is the highest rated image and that's rated by the community themselves. Okay. And this is it. Okay. So this is the highest rated shot. Congratulations to whoever took this photo. And um, let's go ahead and rate this one. Oh, oh wait, you're going, we're going for the one through five, right? Yep. Okay. Three, two, one, four stars. Excellent. I agree. You know, maybe I would give this Five stars if I hadn't seen this exact shot from this exact location Boom. a thousand <laughs> times before. Um, but, you know, Elia's taken this shot. So to me, this looks like Elia Licardi meets Eric Almas. Do you see that? There, Yes, I do see that. And something about the bottom half of this kind of looks composited or something. Yeah. The lighting on this woman doesn't look... It's like, it's like the white balance on her looks too perfect. Well, I, I'm just thinking, like, I know that this scene is probably like a two-second exposure, right? But there's no blur in her, and this guy is also probably like a one-thirtieth of a second exposure because there's still sun coming through. So there's just a lot of pieces that came together. Yeah, and I'm I can tell it's... I, feel, I, I could be wrong, but it feels very composited to me. But that's not a bad thing. They did a great job. It yeah. just feels... It's, it's, a, it's a new take, I guess, on an old location. So... So the other cool thing about this new system is that we actually get to see the community rating of the shot. Oh, okay, cool. So you can see here the community rated it 3.38, and this is the highest rated image in the entire competition slash critique. Stiff audience yeah, out there. Yeah, very <laughs> stiff. It's funny because everybody got so mad, especially at me and Patrick. They're a little nicer with you. But they're like, you guys are such assholes. Like, you're being so mean to these people. And I'm like, you guys are worse than us. <laughs> All right. Well done. You get a tutorial. Yeah. We will send you a message on F-Stoppers. And uh, you should definitely choose a Where Art Meets Architecture. They're the best. The best <laughs> tutorials I've you ever seen. hear that, Elia? The <laughs> best. Um, well, when I'm with Elia, I'm going to say <laughs> photographing the world's the best. So the next free tutorial will be a randomly chosen image picked by you right now. So pick a number two through 20. Uh, 19. Okay. So let's go to the, the next shot here. Right, let me see this. Let me, get, let me get in here. Remind me of the writing system. One is terrible. Two. One, one is a snapshot. Yeah. Two needs work before it hits your portfolio. Three. Three is solid enough for your portfolio to, yeah. for you to start making money. Four is excellent. Five world class. Okay. Are you ready to rate this one? Um, all right, I'm ready. Three, two, one. Interesting. I gave it a two just because I feel like, eh, for your portfolio, it's not bad. I just don't love it for your it, portfolio. Well, it needs to go in the right portfolio. Okay. For a real estate photography portfolio, sure, for a you know, second or third year uh, photographer, I think it fits. Uh, I don't think if you're going after super high-end commissions that that's ever going to be a shot that you put in there. Uh, I could be between two and three. It does need a little bit of work, in my opinion. I mean, I'm also trying to gauge at what point in their career the photographer is at here. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a lot of what could be better to me is the view could be made a little bit prettier. It's very flat out there. Everything, there's not a lot of tonality. It's either black or white. There's yes. not much mid-tone in there. It seems like all the whites have been pushed all the way to white, and all the blacks have been brought very, very dark. Um, so it just seems like a little more finessing of shadow could help. Um, like you lose some depth almost because there's no shadow near, near the camera. And the light source is obviously uh, out the window. That should be the strongest source of light. So why is there no shadow near the camera? That's my big question. But You think they've blasted light into the ceiling like upper right? I do. I think they probably use like a big 
you know, 500 watt light, something like a pro photo, uh, and just blast the light and then blend it with the ambient. But it, and the result is you have a nice, bright, real estate photo, but it's um, not super realistic for architectural photography. That's my issue as well. I feel like this is overlit or over processed or something. And the most interesting part to me is this highlight that's on the cabinets in the middle of the frame by the uh, microwave. Mm -hmm. I feel like that really starts adding some interest. Right. And I want to see more of that throughout this scene. And then when I look outside, I feel like, ah, it's just a little bit overexposed. And you want to see some natural light, some shadow, some depth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The community gave this one 2.6. So, so run around one Pretty much said. dead on on that one. <clears throat> this looks like your dream house here. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's from the space age future <laughs> on Mars. Three, two, one, uh, three. Yeah, it's a middle three there. Yeah, I'm in between a two and a three on this one. I feel like they've done a pretty good job. Um... It feels a little flat to me, but it could be natural light. Maybe you would say it's not, but maybe the sun, I mean, if, especially if you look at the reflection. It looks like the sun's behind us. Yeah. So it does feel a little flat. Let me, is it, there's something weird going on with the concrete. I don't know if that was replaced. It looks kind of like very featureless. I could be totally wrong and just the way it was, but something, maybe the, the right call would have been to shoot this at sunrise, I'm assuming this was sunset or the opposite dusk, so that you get a little more depth to it because it feels very sort of two-dimensional to me. Yes, yes. Some I would kind of like to see it, and there probably just isn't another angle, but I'd love to see them move around to the right just a little bit more yeah. to show the three-dimensionality. Three three-dimensionality, yeah. Did I say but that? I know how hard these urban sort of homes can be to shoot when you have another house, I'm assuming, 20 feet to the right. And yeah, another house 20 feet to the left. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All sometimes right. it's not your fault that the composition is very difficult. The community gave it 3.25. So that's getting pretty close to the highest rated image. Next up. Okay. Three, two, one, two stars. Now, I have seen some stuff that you've done. They look similar to this. Mm -hmm. And I can't put my finger on why yours looks so much better, but there's something about yours that are like... It's the light. Maybe, but there's you're doing no... something in post-processing as well, <laughs> some magic. Like, this kind of feels like a snapshot to me that was just, like, quickly taken without giving much thought to the yeah. lighting. And I've seen some stuff of yours with hard light, but it still has detail and stuff. And this has detail in the shadows, too, but... Something about this feels snapshotty. To me, it feels like the, for some reason, the, the only light in the photo is way on the left. And now, uh, it, the sun is where in this? The sun is like behind us to the right. If the sun was coming in here from left to right, and you got like texture coming out on the facades here, or you had you know one face in light and the other in shadow, you could add a lot of motion and depth. I think the composition is nice. I could use a little more headroom in my opinion. Like a little, you know, imagine this is a square instead of a rectangle. You get some sky up there for breathing room. You know, you have the nice leading lines here, but there's, the light just doesn't match the composition for me, and that's what needs work. So if you came back and shot this at total twilight, or, you know, early in the morning, I would assume, when there's light hitting in this courtyard, I feel like it would be a lot better. And uh, some people in here wouldn't hurt either. Yeah, it, it's, this is a tough one. I, I feel <coughs> like the subject matter is this tree. Yeah. in this shot and right. it should not be and therefore to me it, yeah, could, it feels you like you should crop past the uh the tree completely yeah or just have a little bit of the tree and have this be yeah the... like maybe it should be a vertical image or something yeah that's really nice too right there that feels very nice like there's a lot of unnecessary tree there yeah it just it's very strange that both buildings are in shadow but then a huge part of the image, this tree is, is bright. And the eye always goes to the brightest part, so. Yeah. The community gives it two stars almost exactly. All right, here is the next one. Do you know what this is? Hmm? Do you know what this is? Yeah, it's a black and white photo of a, some kind of building. Thank you. That's helpful. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. I thought maybe this was a famous <laughs> building that you would know. We can, all right, ready? Here we go. Wait, what is three? 
Three is a solid image for your portfolio. Three, two, one. Three stars. I was in between a three and a four on this. I yeah. really like this as like an artistic image. Yeah. I don't know that an architectural photographer would want that much stuff like this on their website, but you know, it totally depends on what your type it's, of clientele it's is. It's really cool. You know what I mean? I just feel like it needs, like it would belong, it'd be a great portfolio image if you had 10 other shots just like this, you know? Uh, I think it's compositionally strong. I would even crop it a little bit, more something like that. Crop the left side so you're yeah, seeing bring in more of the of right. Less, less negative space maybe, and make it more about the, this weird sort of parabolic, parabolic. We're gonna get in a definitely <laughs> par parabolic. That's <laughs> definitely how you say it. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, let's see what the community had to say. Three point three. Whoa, this is one of the higher rated images. Yeah. Cool. It's funny. Before working with you, if I had seen an image like this, I'd probably give this like four or five stars. Like, whoa, <laughs> how did they do it? But now that I have seen you work through a million of these homes, I'm a little bit harder. Oh, I'm going to be rough. Three, two, one. Two stars. We agree. Um, I, I think it just needs work in the processing department. Um, if you had shot it 10 minutes earlier so that the interior lights weren't so overpowering, you've got them kind of bleeding out, especially these um, these cans on the outside where they're flaring up a little bit. The sky would have... Well, now, how do they do that? It was a f like a flare filter put on? No, it's just long exposure, maybe F11, F13, okay. drop-down aperture. And I feel, I feel like the sky is a little bit too dark. It's like that nuclear blue, you know? Yeah. A bit of a softer blue might be better. And the grass is screaming green um so i just think it's a little too oversaturated shot a little bit too late i don't strongly dislike the composition i think it could use some minor tweaks uh some of the things that i don't like aren't really your fault like i don't like that 1150 sign but that's the architect or builder not you um and it just kind of is what it is maybe a little closer would help to kind of make it a little more graphic seeing a little more sky wouldn't kill me um, but, I mean, it could be, it, if you literally shot this 10 minutes earlier and took all the sliders in Lightroom or Photoshop and went to a third of where they are now, it could be a great shot. Yeah, I, d I feel like it's a little over-processed. The problem is, is that I bet there are a lot of realtors out there who would love this and who would hire you for this. Yes. And so for that reason, I lean towards, like, it should be a three-star because... People are getting hired for this sort of thing right. all day, every day. And realtors love that smash you over the head with a chair, oversaturation and processing. Yeah. And, and, you know, there might be something to it because I'm, I'm on Zillow like every day. I live on <laughs> Zillow. And an image like this would catch my attention. Yeah. So for real estate photography, like, it's pretty good. But uh, for, for a more artistic architectural photographer, it's a little overdone. Yes. And I, I, I'd say a little less foreground. And a, a simple shift up, because it feels like the house is really heavy because it's on top of the horizon. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the but the thing is, for the real estate photo, it's really nice to be able to see everything. I kept thinking, man, I, I think I'd like to see this vertical so that it would cut off the building in the left. Yeah, and you can but see I, the tops of the trees and stuff. Yeah, but I kind of like, you know, if I was going to buy this house, I would want to see, yeah, the landscaping and everything. So I would like it to be wider. Yeah. For I that think reason. It this way, you know how realtors are always trying to cheat you. And not show you how close the neighbors are. Yeah. <laughs> you go vertical, you can ditch that house on the left. No, I, I yeah, I, absolutely. But I, I don't know. I think it works for if, if I was looking to buy the house. The community gives it 2.6 stars. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like that's right on the money. I was right around two or three on this. That's cool. Yeah. This kind of looks like a photo that you you just took that you were showing me. You took you shot like an auditorium or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Disney concert hall. Okay. That's really cool. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. You gave it three. I gave it four. I gave it. Well, I I gave it. It just depends on what portfolio it goes into. Okay. That's all. And it, and it could be four. It could be a three. Um. I believe that's a hotel in Atlanta. I was thinking the same thing. And 
I like this because it's a new take on it. It almost looks like it's out of Star Wars or The Matrix. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's really, really cool. And if you have this sort of like ethereal, stormy, dark portfolio, that could be an amazing shot to go in it. Uh, I just need to know more context um, before I give it like a a definite grade, if you will. But I think it's a really cool shot in any case. Yeah, I, I just feel like this is it's kind of going towards the fine art realm rather than architectural photography. Um, and I would imagine this photographer was just staying at this hotel. I think I stayed at this hotel a couple years ago and took a similar shot, you know, maybe with my iPhone yeah. or something. Like, Whoa, what a crazy hotel. Yeah. But uh, the way the lighting is, is working here, and maybe this looks like this all day every day. I don't remember. But in this shot, it looks really cool. I love the play of the white balance. Yeah. I think it's a really cool shot. The community gives it 3.36 stars. So we were pretty accurate, right? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Three stars. We agree. I love everything that's going on here. The one thing that kind of cheapens this to me is that the people in it are oddly underexposed for how white everything else is. So it's like, doesn't it feel strange? Let me see. And just yeah, how well, dark I everyone just is. Like I just my only thing is why is it black and white? I think this would be cool in color, and I think we if people are wearing blue clothes or then, red, then pop they might bit. just show. Maybe it's the filter they applied. They put a red filter on it, and everything went dark pupil wise. Um, I think it's a great photo, a great architectural photo. I don't get the black and white. I think it would would look better in color. I could be wrong. There's a, a few architectural photographers who do great work in black and white, like Helen Benet or something. But um, I don't think the black and white helps here if, as a photo of architecture. Um, it's not really... I'm going to see if I can explain this simply. It's not artsy enough to get away with the black and white. But I think if it's more of an architectural photo, if you drop the black and white, it would be a great architecture shot. I like the people, add great scale, add motion, nice symmetry. My eye goes all over the place, which is great. But uh, What about the number seven box on the bottom right? Does that bother you? It didn't bother me until you pointed it out. <laughs> it bothers me. I mean, but it's probably, I'm sure that there was, the, the seven, six, five, you can see that they're all over the place, you know? Yep. So I imagine if you're shooting this for a client, that could be a cool thing to show. You know, someone had to labor over that design and probably spent days of their lives <laughs> thinking about what, you know, what typeface to use and how I to have no design doubt, that box. But should it be that big right in the bottom of the frame? Yeah. I don't know that there's another option. I don't know if you can crop past it or what, but uh, my eye goes to that seven a lot. All right, let's see what the community says. 2.8, right around what we said at three. Three, two, one, three stars. We agree again. This just feels like a solid, simple image to me. Yeah, it's not a hero shot. It's not mind-blowing. Like, it's a good detail shot. It's not going to... I don't think it's going to win you any big contracts or anything. Um, the one thing I don't like, I think the light is a little bit flat. Again, there's no shadow anywhere in the photo. That's mm -hmm. what bugs mm -hmm. me. Like, the, the wall has the same tonality as the ceiling, has the same tonality as the bed. And then the exterior is darker than the interior. So I wish that the levels could be messed with a little bit so that there was more depth to it and more shadow. That's my, and like, you know, the bookshelves are almost pure white on the inside. There's no, no depth. So it, it's a solid shot, but it could be improved slightly. That's what I, that's my conclusion there, you know. The community gives it 2.42 stars. See, they community harder than us. <laughs> Where is this? Abu Dhabi. That's the mosque in Abu Dhabi? I believe that's what it is, yeah. I didn't get to go there, but Patrick did. And the behind the scenes, photographing the world three behind the scenes, you can see Patrick go here. He is dressed inappropriately, and so they have to give him a... Uh, a, a robe. A robe to wear. Um, they look pretty amazing. <laughs> Let's see. The building, not the robe. Um... I'm ready, I think. 
three, four, five, two. You, oh, really? Just two? Well, I want to give it a two point five. It's not. I don't think that it needs work. I don't think it's a bad photo. I just think it's a photo that I've seen a million times before. And there's nothing new enough about it that makes me say, wow. Like, I've seen people photograph this, this building, and they have a new take on it, and it's incredible. It's like, I never saw it that way. I never saw a process that, that way, or the, never, I never saw the people in it in a certain way, or they did something different with it. Whereas I feel like this has been photographed many, many times before. Um, and it's uh, technically a good shot, but it's not have creatively you, doing it for have me. Have you been here? I have not. Okay. I'm wondering how much talent was used getting this to look this way. I mean, it looks great. The mm -hmm. lighting is great. Yeah. I'm just curious, like, is this just what it looks like all the time? Yeah. I don't remember. I know Patrick got some footage there that I thought looked really good, but it certainly didn't look this good. So I don't know if this is multiple exposures and blended together and stuff, or this is literally like, oh, just... Hold your camera up and take a snapshot, and they all look like this because they put so much thought into lighting and painting and, you know, right. keeping it looking pristine. But I give it three stars. I was in between a three and a four. I just didn't give it a four because I thought, like, ah, it's just another photograph of a famous place. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if you're a professional architectural photographer, it doesn't seem like you would want pictures in your portfolio that a thousand other people, people can, have. can get, right. The community gives us 3.32 stars, so they agree with me more than you. Three, two, one. Whoa! Really? Yeah. Four stars. I was in between a two and a three on this. I, I like it. This is the type of stuff that... Now, I've said it many times, and people always pick on me, that I would hang on my wall. I feel like this is just an artistic I'm gonna shot. I'm going to hang it on my wall, but I'm going to give it a two. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as an architectural photographer, I don't know. It just it, it feels like a fine art photograph of architecture rather than like getting hired to shoot this building. You know, if I have some clients... And they would say, if I can make every photograph of their building be a fine art photograph, they'd love me forever. You know what I mean? They're happy with you zooming in and being abstract like well, this? Well, not, not every photo like this, yeah. but every photo should be as interesting. I can, I can look at this for an hour here and get lost in it. Um, oh, no, I think hold it, on. It's color. <laughs> you, can't, you can't look at it for an okay, hour. Okay, a full hour. Okay. A few minutes. Uh, it's color, it's motion, there's line, there's shape, there's form, there's shadow, there's highlight. Uh, I think it's really cool. And I can again if, if if like this would be a really nice print I think you know to blow up nice and big. Um, yes. What would be really cool is if you could see people in the windows doing whatever they're doing. That would that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, especially if there's like crazy stuff going on. But I think it's graphic. It's simple. I think the colors are striking. I think it's a very solid shot. And if you had a full portfolio of stuff like that, that'd be really cool. Well, I rated it solid, and you rated it excellent. All right. Let's see. The community gives it 3.02 <laughs> stars. Wrong again, Mike Kelly. I know nothing. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. I thought you were going to be harsh on this. Well, so, I, I'm being harsh because I know there's potential. Okay. For this, Keep going. This person is being a professional. Photograph, they're, they're photographing, I don't know if it's real estate, architecture, interior design, commercial, hotels, whatever. Uh, I know that they're good. I know the fundamentals are all there. So here's why I'm saying it needs improvement. It just needs a little help from the staging and decluttering side of things. There's a lot going on. Um, and I'm having a difficult time really discerning what the subject is here. So the first thing that jumps out at me and almost single-handedly makes me go harsh on this is the position of that chair. Now, the chair is massive, and it's not helped by wide-angle distortion, but one of my golden rules for architectural photography is if you're going to photograph a model, you have a beautiful model, male or female, are you going to put them in front of the camera and have them stand straight like this and spread their legs out and spread their arms out? Like, you no. Know, you know what I mean? You want to show the curves, the architecture of the, the model, just like you want to show the curves, the design of the chair here. And it's just it's like bright white hot uh, chair and 
chandelier, not chandelier, um, lamp here. They just grab my eyes. They have me, you know, the motion of the photo is kind of ruined by this whole setting over here. I agree. I agree. I, I wouldn't say it's ruined, but I, I it's, agree. It's a stumbling block. I feel like, yeah, it could definitely use a little turn in towards the center of the frame to kind of yeah. keep your eyes moving into the frame. Um, it also feels a little overexposed to me. Like, it's just so white that my yeah. eye goes to this fat chair on the left. Yeah. But, um, I mean, this whole room is so interesting to me. It, it almost doesn't even feel like a house. It feels like a... Uh, like a hotel lobby or something. Well, to me, it feels like a furniture store. Mm. Like a uh, West Elm store mm -hmm. or something. Which, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad, but... Well, there's just a lot going on. I mean, I think you could probably take out half of the things in here and have it be just as good as, as a, of a photo. Um, you know what I mean? Like all the trinkets everywhere and... Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out what am I supposed to focus on. If we're going to focus on the room back here, we can make it a little bit tighter. If the focus is the bar, well, let's photograph the, the table or the bar, whatever this is. Uh, if the photograph is supposed to be about the chair, we can punch in and make a nice vignette about this little setting here. But uh, I just feel like there's a lot going on. The chair... You think the shot be... overall is just too wide? Uh, I don't think it's necessarily... You can make a wide photograph if you simplify the contents of the photograph. Or you can make a tighter photograph if you really hone in on details. And this has sort of, in my opinion, had trouble doing either. Does that make sense? Yes. I give it a three, though, because I feel like realtors are going to love this. They're going to eat this <laughs> of up. Of course they yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. The community gives it 2.72 stars, which is closer to three than two. And I don't mean that at two and that it's a bad photo. I, I know that, you know, obviously the fundamentals are the processing is pretty good. The vertical lines are nice and straight. You know what you're doing. I'm just saying if I, I see where you want to be, and I want you to get there, and a few I, things I, will help. Yeah, I, I can... When I see a photographer, that I'm like, this person knows what they're doing. Yeah. I want to give them a little critique here right, yeah, yeah. that they can handle. Yeah. <laughs> I might rate a little harder, too. So I, I think you're seeing That's something there. Freaking cool. Okay. Three, two, one. Really? I'm in there. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to give this a four by you were like, this is so cool. I thought you were <laughs> It is pumped. very cool. So... I was about to give this a four, and then I noticed one thing. The vertical lines. The vertical lines, the only vertical lines that I see are on this planter. And they're like. And it looks insane. <laughs> and I didn't, it took me a long time to even notice this planter. But, because looking at this building, I don't know what's vertical and what's not vertical. Like, it doesn't need to be vertical. But then you start looking at the planter in the foreground here, and then on the far right, you can see these planters, and it's crazy. Yeah. Like, what was the shot on? Is this a fisheye lens or something? No, again, I think it's it's close to being amazing, but it misses some fundamentals, which is why I think it needs work. So don't take it as a bad two. It's like I see an that amazing there's two. potential there. <laughs> it's a two that could very quickly be a five <laughs> if you okay. fix some certain things. Okay. Ver vertical lines are a mess. I don't know what weighs up and down. And what would they do? Use a I tilt would, shift. Line that sucker up with the horizon. You can't use a tilt shift on. Dude, this was shot so wide. 17. What was that? 11? It can't be more than. Let me see. It looks so it looks wide. It's like 17 or 16 to me, and it's just looking like almost straight up. Then why is this planter so warped out if it shot at 17 millimeters? Because you're looking up. 17. If you tilt 17 up, you're going to get some crazy, crazy distortion. Okay. Right? If I'm wrong. So, I mean, so if you believe that you could fix this with a <clears throat> tilt shift lens, yeah. then you should also be able to fix it in Photoshop by just You're stretching it. You lose thirty five percent of the pixels at least if you. I'm just guessing. Ah, who cares Start about that? that? Nobody. Thing out. Is, is, you put it on the internet. Nobody can see all that. No, not 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 like the not the actual quality of the image, but oh. you're going to be stretching. But that's what happens with the tilt shift lens. No, it isn't. You retain, you don't distort anything in the tilt shift. That's the whole idea. No. That, yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> you're not losing pixels. Well, I know you're not losing shift. pixels because you're using the whole sensor. Right. But I thought the whole concept was... It's not stretching the, the field of view. It's just changing the field of view. You're not... You're not you're okay, so, okay, so what you'd have to do is shoot on a wider lens and then crop into that shot and that would give you the exact same look correct as but if a you tilt wanted shift all lens. the pixels you can use a tilt shift but i think okay. it's super cool i think again 
it's not a bad two. It's a, this is an awesome two, and it just has this one fundamental flaw that is driving me crazy as an architectural photographer. And look, rules are meant to be breaking, broken, breaking, breaking, broken. Breaking. Rules are meant to be broken. Yep. Um, but I don't think this was the time to break the rule. Because okay. the distortion also with the star, the stars in the sky, that's distorted, right? What would Elias say about that? I don't know what Elia would say about that. I don't know if he has a problem with that or not. Um, but I think it's really cool. There's a lot of potential. Just as far as architectural photography go, if the things, if the, the things, if the lines were straight, this would be a very strong photo. And if it was centered, I feel like there's, it's not centered for some reason. Like we're looking one way, but the, the planks in the ground go another way and the lines and everything just feels like it's a fun house instead of showing me what it looks like in reality. I like, I, I mean, I like the, Funhouse aspects of it, and I didn't really even notice the vertical lines. I guess you can kind of see them in the, the left and right side of the building on the doors and windows. I'm also a fun-hating architectural photographer, <laughs> and I like to have my everything straight in the way it is, and you know what I mean? Okay. But let, let's predict what the community says before we swipe. Um, I'm going to guess around three stars. I say four. <laughs> well, it can't be four because we already know what the highest rated image was. And okay, it was like so like 3.5? 3.2. Okay. Next up. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one, two stars. We agree. Um, this feels snapshotish to me because of the subject matter. I just feel like this is kind of an ugly uh, lobby area. The white balance is all over the place. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel lit in any mm -hmm. way. It just kind of feels like this is the way it looked when you walked in. Mm -hmm. The composition's kind of strange with this open hallway to the right yeah i either want to see more of it or none of it <laughs> and and you yeah, know I, I think the composition is it's okay i mean it shows me what's there it doesn't make me feel anything in any way it's not graphic or very interesting it's very informational it's like a xerox of the space uh and the white balance is a bit of a mess like i see many different colors of lights here i see daylight i see blue i see this greenish i see an orange um if you're not going to add light to kind of tame the white balance, you should fix it in post to some degree. So I just feel like it needs, um, yeah, it needs a little work. It's not a terrible photograph. I just think it needs, you know, some tidying up uh, and more uh, attention paid to composition and, and staging and a little bit of styling. And there's a lot of easy, it's an easy problem to solve. You just need to take it, slow it down a little bit, uh, fix white balance, work on your staging and styling, and you can get a, it's, I'm assuming this is a hotel or something, right? Yeah, it's got to be something like that. I had this idea for a critique that we need to do in the future. Tell me if you would be interested in doing this with me. Where you can submit any images you want, but your best images. And you put your watermark on the image. The first image we see is the watermark only so david will zoom into it and we only see the watermark so we see the logo and the name and everything and we try to guess how good the photographer is based on how good or bad their logo is Sign me up. that would be fun right yeah that would be fun because i i for but the you know most what you're part do is you're gonna put my my logo on there even though i don't want to write my pictures <laughs> And you're going to be like, this photographer is a one, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I would never do that to you, Mike. Um, but for the most part, I think the quality of photographers and their logos go very much hand in hand. That, yes, that's okay. Like, everyone started out somewhere. You know what I mean? I had a crappy logo at one point in time. But, but It's evolved. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm just saying that... <clears throat> I just, I feel like it would be an amazing experiment to figure out, because you may be great at figuring out what, you know, if you take good photos or not, but maybe your logo is bad. Like, for instance, I have this buddy of mine who does incredible work. I'm not going to mention who he is. And I just noticed his logo and I thought, this logo looks bad. I would never think that the owner of this logo does this level of work. <laughs> so it would be interesting to have, like, a couple people try to uh, guess but the community rates this image 1.95, so exactly what we get. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Two stars. I don't really know what this is. Is this it's like is some kind of church or something? Or a basilica of some sort? Like a domed? Well, obviously. Good. Yeah, Win good windows. Windows, windows there. <laughs> there's a tree. 
Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, is this a fisheye lens or is this a, also 17? It just looks like a 1635 or something, and you tilt it up and you get that. Maybe I am just so every time we pull out our super wide angle we're shooting like stars and landscapes and so maybe i'm just not accustomed to how much perspective warp there is yeah. up close but i mean this looks like a fisheye lens to me mm -hmm. but i guess it's not um yeah i mean it's underexposed it's there's like there's no, no lighting subject uh you know the community gives this one 1. 1.6 stars ours community yeah even harder than us there we go Now, I think I know who took this photo. You think you know who took this photo? Yes. And I think you do, too. I have no idea. <laughs> I, think, I think this was recently on your uh, Facebook group. Anybody who doesn't know, if you buy or win Mike's uh, tutorials, you get access to his secret Facebook group. And I have to say, out of all the tutorials that we've done and all the secret Facebook groups, Yours is the best. It is the best, man. Like <laughs> just so many talented photographers. Everybody's helping each other. It's very active. That's my favorite part of the tutorial is that group. I ask questions in there all the time. Yeah. Like, hey, what do I charge? I don't know. <laughs> and the other group that's really good is Monty's group, yeah. which you are also in. Yes. And it's so funny because Mike is always in this group asking these very detailed <laughs> billing questions about how to bid for jobs and everything. And, and people are like, I can't believe you're in here with us, Mike, asking the same questions. Yeah, well, so like, because Monty is like the king of <laughs> bidding knowledge. You yeah. Know what I mean, he sits on the throne of invoices <laughs> and he knows what to do. So I, I'm going to milk that for all it's worth. I'm ready. You ready? Three, two, one. Three stars. I believe that Frazier in Las Vegas took this, okay. <laughs> and I think this is Peter Lick's personal residence in Las Vegas. Because that is Peter Lick's photo. I believe that's Peter Lick's photo in the back. I could be I could be very wrong now, but I'm pretty sure this is... Is Peter Lick's photo a, a, com a composite, or is that a single exposure? That's I think those question. trees are real. There's no moon in that shot. Um, so why did I give this a three and not a four? I was in between a three and a four on this. I feel like I love that sunlight coming through. Maybe yes. it's fake. I don't even know if it's real or not. The bed feels a little overexposed to me. Nuclear bed. Okay. And then, and then I'm trying to decide like about the crop and like that much of the granite ground and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know exactly where I would crop. Chop right through the carpet. Really? Right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. I think I saw another photo from this set that was backed up a little bit, and you could see Peter Lick apparently is like an interior designer as well, and he built this wood wall back here that goes across the ceiling. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the top of the bed. And oh, yeah, you can see it. it yeah, it looked amazing. Like a little less floor and a little more ceiling could be cool. Because like this, I don't care about the grant or whatever this is in the floor. I don't really care about the, the rug. I do think this is very cool, though, up here. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I think I liked a shot that was a little bit wider more, but I don't really remember. I love the sunlight slashing through. I wish there wasn't so much light down on the floor. You know, I wish that that slash was hitting the bed and then the floor was in shadow too. I don't know if that would be possible, but that would be very cool. Um, I feel like the bed is just a little bit too hot. It's almost there. It just needs some finessing. Okay, let's see what the community gives it. 2.68 stars. Man, they mm -hmm. don't like that one that much. <laughs> Not as much as us. What have we here? Okay. Three, two, one. Two stars, we agree. Um, this one just kind of feels like a snapshot to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know how you're going to shoot this building any different than this. Obviously, you could you know, shoot at different times of day and stuff. I I'm talking about composition, though. I don't know if this is the best with the flowers in the way. Like, it's okay. I don't know if getting I up higher. I just feel like the building is so abstract. Mm -hmm. The comp the photos of it could be much more abstract and interesting. Like yes. This is just a picture of a building to me, not a photograph of architecture. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. I mean, I think you can compare this shot to the one that you said you could look at for hours which is like zoomed in and you know showing all of these detailed elements yeah. rather than just a wide angle shot of the skyscraper. Right. 
And I think you're exactly right. When you when you back up and shoot this wide, and especially like the flowers in the way, it just doesn't really fit to me. Right. And I also feel like the sky is over overdone. A little bit too late, perhaps. Uh, that we never really see that blue in nature. It feels like this really cyan heavy sort of blue. It's a little bit too much. It's almost like an HDR, overdone HDR. Um, I like the flower element. I just feel like it needs to be worked in a little bit better. You know what I mean? I would, I would be very interested to see how you would photograph this because you do shoot very modern build. I don't even know if this is considered modern, but... You're learning. I don't know what. What am I learning? If this is considered modern or not. You're I don't know. different genres of architecture. <laughs> but I would be very interested to see how you would shoot this. And I could... I could see you zooming in and getting all these details, yeah. but not every image can be that. So I, I wonder how you would shoot this to you know show One most of it. One thing that bugs me is there's no context. I don't know what's up, or I mean I know what's up and down. I don't know what's around it. I don't know where the where the straight vertical lines are. Like how to get into it. Yeah, exactly. So showing it in the environment, in, even wider, could be very cool as well. Like remember that Hawaii shot I did where I was like 20 feet, not 20 feet, like 200 feet back. And you saw the house surrounded by the environment. You know, yes. where is this? Is this in a city? Is this in a field somewhere? Is this in? Looks like it's in Europe, obviously, because Americans are would very, never allow yeah, this monstrosity. Allow this. <laughs> All right, the community gives this two point two six stars. Is this in the Vatican? I think it is. It's funny. I, I don't know that this is the one in the Vatican. It looks kind of similar, but I, I didn't remember it being black like this in the Vatican. But I saw a photo of the stairs in the Vatican years ago, and I remember thinking, that photo is incredible. And then I went to the Vatican, and I saw it, and I'm like, these stairs don't look that good in person. <laughs> they they kind of were rough looking, and they just look cheaper in person. And then when I look at this photograph... It just doesn't seem like any part of this has been retouched at all. You know, you can just see, like, stains all over the stair, and on the bottom it looks like sensor dust, but it's probably just, like, crap on the floor down there. So mm -hmm. it's done much more cheaply than the first shot that I ever saw, which kind of blew my mind. Right. All right, we can go. Three, two, one. I, I'm, I'm in between. A two and it's, three? It's a solid shot of a tourist attraction. I don't think it's a super architectural image, if that makes sense. Um, what do you, why, do you, why do you give it a two? Um, it's just kind of grungy looking to me. And it doesn't feel like it's centered or something? Like it's skewed weirdly? or Does that make sense? Yeah. Just like it's a not off-centered enough to be asymmetrical? I, I, I'm wondering if this is the Vatican stairs. Do we have a phone around here? This has to be the Vatican stairs. The thing is... Literally every photo we've seen on it's Google Images color. right now, <laughs> I per personally like better than this. I like the lighting better. I like it with people or with no people, but I think there's like one person at the very bottom here. This just kind of feels more like a snapshot to me than other shots of the Vatican stairs that I've seen. So I give this two stars. The community gives it 3.18. So they like it much more than us. It's funny when you visit an area where everybody takes the same photo, yeah. it loses a lot of magic. All right, this is number 19. You won a tutorial, and um, this might be an architectural <coughs> photographer, so definitely check out Where Art, Art Meets Architecture with Mike Kelly, one, two, or three. We've made three now, and... Uh, We'll send you a message. Let us know which tutorial you want. And anybody who's watching this who doesn't know what we're talking about, go to fstoppers.com slash store, and you can see all of our tutorials. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Two stars. I don't quite know what's going on here, like how this image was created. I'll tell you. Someone in the corner put the camera on a tripod and took a picture. You think this is one exposure? Maybe it's HDR. Looks like it could have been a photomatics. Yeah, because you got some haloing down in here. Um, I think this location has great potential. Yeah. But I don't think it has been done justice. Okay. 
I'm interested to know how this photo was taken because something about this does not look like a single exposure to me. The sky looks fantastic. I don't know that I would touch the sky. It's great. Mm -hmm. You could literally take this exact shot, if it's a raw image, and just tone down the white balance inside the house itself. Like you have all this yellow coming inside the house and it's, it's just too much for me. Tone that down a little bit, composite that in there, and then boom, now you're up to a three stars in my opinion. But something about this feels like soft and glowy, kind of like an HDR image. It was like a handheld HDR that was then merged together. I don't know, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it, I don't see big halos. That's why I'm confused as to how this was created. I just wish that this was composed better. You have such an interesting graphic home with these great architectural elements like the, you know, the, the concrete work back there and the pool, all these beautiful leading lines and everything, mm -hmm. and these cantilevered, um, you know, the awnings and whatnot. Not awnings, but the, the breezeway. Like, it, it's this, it could be an incredible place to make photos of, but because the composition was so sort of haphazard, it really knocks it down a few pegs for me. Um, like, I, I, I see so many, it reminds me of the house in Hawaii that we photographed. I see a ton of compositional opportunities, but not a lot of attention paid to composition anywhere. And you can do cool stuff with detail shots. You can do cool stuff with wide angle shots. Looks like it's in this, uh, it looks like Hawaii or the Caribbean or something. This amazing location. Um, and we get a crooked corner shot out of it. That's my big complaint. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying, but if this was done for a realtor, this is where they would say, take the oh, shot. I know you the hate- death of good photography. I understand. So. Speaking to the photographer, both of us, I used to shoot real estate. You've done it for a long time. You have to get these shots. Here's the thing. I, com I disagree. If, if here's, I'm going to go on a, a tangent here. You pick up a copy of Architectural Digest or Dwell, and they have a story on a house. There's eight or nine photos, right? None of them are going to be that wide angle. They're all going to be composed with extreme care. Do you think that those photos from Architectural Digest or Dwell are good enough to convince someone to buy the house? Or do they need 45 wide-angle, crooked-ass photos that the realtor's going to want to sell the same thing? I would bet every time that the photos that are well-composed would do a better job than the wide-angle realtor brand of HDR photos. If anyone disagrees, please tell me. Okay. I, I agree with what you're saying. Like, if I was about to buy a house, I would, I would want the house photos. to be an Architectural Digest. I right. wouldn't want it to just be on Zillow. I'd want it. To, I'd want there to be stories written about the house <laughs> yeah, I was about. Yeah, yeah. So I agree with you there. And and if I was hanging photos up on a wall, I would want those photos to be the ones I was hanging up on the wall. But we were just down in Turks and Caicos a couple of days ago, and I had to find an Airbnb. Yeah. And the places that like don't show each of the bedrooms and show like weird close pictures of like the soap with the you know I'm like <laughs> I don't trust it I don't trust it I don't want to stay here I you need to show me where I'm about to stay and when people are like yeah it's it's so close to the beach but then they don't show the, the photo of the beach from the location I'm like ah you're lying <laughs> I know you're lying to me so with photos like these they're ugly photos but they tell you the truth you know it's like okay i know what it looks like now from the back i see that side of the argument i also feel like most people except those evil one percenters <laughs> are going to look at the house in person before they buy it so yeah. you hook them with the dwell architectural digest artsy photos that are that are well composed i mean they're informational we're not lying and then they see it in person and say, okay, I like it i don't like it would you buy a house sight unseen if, with, with no. airbnb photos you know what i mean no but i would Book an Airbnb, I also sight feel unseen. Like for every, so it's a different market, but I feel like for every um, house that has these wide angle, crazy photos, the realtor is also probably losing people by the bad photography. By it being crooked, super wide angle, things look small in the background. A lot of people these days, they're like, I see it on internet forums all the time, they're like, I'm so sick of realtors using these stupid wide angle lenses to show me a house that looks exaggerated compared to what it is in real life. Like you go look at a bedroom and it's shot 11 millimeters. It looks like a master, but it's really a, a six by eight yeah. kids room. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's a, a balance to be struck. Um, but I do think 
I, I, can, I think you can make this photo a lot better, too, if you just step three feet to the left or something and get this out of the way and, and tidy up the down here. There's not, nothing wrong inherently with informational photos like this. Just do them well and then mix it up with some beautiful architectural detail kind of shots. Okay. The community gives it 2.5 stars, so they like it better than both of us. The sky does look nice. Final shot. Look at this. There we go. There's a photograph <laughs> of architecture. All right. Hmm. Okay. Three, two, one. Now, I think that you're giving this a four because you've been angered by some of the other <laughs> shots. I don't think that you would give this a four normally, but I think it's very close to a four. Okay. Um, one thing that bothers me, I want a little bit of pop of light on the left side over here with mm -hmm. like the cookbooks and the stuff. Mm -hmm. I want, I want, I want to see a little bit more of that. The outside over here, like what's going on with the mountain in the in the glass? Was this all added in later? I feel like this is the first photograph that actually has mood. It does, and and I, and I knew you I were you were this. going to be excited because <laughs> there were shadows in this, yes. whereas all of the other shots they were just kind of blown out. Yeah. Um, but, 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 it's and in, in places it feels too dim to me. It's like if you're gonna leave the left side of this frame this dark, does it even need to be in the shot? Should you zoom in? And then, do you like the back of this couch being that dark? It, I don't mind it. It feels like it would feel if I was there. The exterior is bright. The interior is wooden. It doesn't feel dark to me. It feels, uh, it, it, sorry, it doesn't feel uh, too dark. It does feel dark as a wooden interior should feel. It feels like it should feel. You have this beautiful golden afternoon light coming in, right? Mm -hmm. We haven't seen that in really any photo yet. You know what I mean? I think that adds a lot of information like imagine this Airbnb as an Airbnb cover shot and be like, oh my God, that's amazing. Book it now. Here's the thing though. I just feel like you can make this better so easily. I, I didn't give it a five, I gave it a four. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree that on the left over here, we need to have some light coming in? To me, it feels like you came in and you took a natural light shot of this and you forgot to turn on the ambient incandescent lights in the room. And maybe you... Well, why, why would you turn on the ambient incandescent lights in the room? You have the beautiful sunlight coming in as you're... Because you don't over here in the kitchen, and it feels like a mistake to me. And doesn't I, this just feel like late afternoon, you spent all day surfing, you just got home, it's quiet, it's relaxing. I, yes, it does. Isn't yes, it awesome? does. <laughs> I, I agree, but I just want to see a little bit more light. I'm not saying a lot. I'm not <laughs> trying to take away your shadows, Mike. Okay. I'm not trying to take away the shadows. I could... I could I, I could understand that it does feel slightly dark, but it doesn't ruin it for me. It's not like I hate this photo because it's too dark. I'm not going that far. I, I gave it a three. It's a three stars. <laughs> I want to give it a four. I'm in between a three and a four. You went straight to the four. I'm just trying to bring you back down to reality. <laughs> but I think the composition is fantastic. Look, you could definitely improve it. There's some staging and styling maneuvers you could use to improve things here, but I think as far as composition goes, it's fantastic. I love the receding lines in the ceiling, the lines in the uh, windows and the wall. Everything pulls my eye right through. There's motion, there's movement, there's highlight, there's shadow, there's a view. It has, it's 90% of the way there. And there's just a few things that I would tweak to improve a little bit. Like I'd pull that chair out entirely. I'd maybe put something cool down here. You're talking about the chair on the bottom right. Yeah, the chair on the bottom right. Um, I hate televisions and photographs. Maybe I'd pull the TV out. I don't know. We'll have to see what we can put there instead. Um, but I think this is a very strong... I mean, you could even crop a little bit there, maybe? Yes, it feels like there's so much space on the left side, but it's so dark that it kind of feels like a little bit of a mistake. Like, you could crop in a little bit more, and now you don't need to light the left side at all. But the way it's composed right now, I like the composition. I just want a little bit of light in that kitchen. But I do love those those beams in the ceiling. Yeah. That kind of. Yeah, and the light really hitting cool. them yeah. looks awesome. Yeah. All right, let's see what the community gives it. Three stars. I'm right. You're wrong. <laughs> 
All right, guys, that wraps up this critique. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you'd like to check out any of our tutorials and especially Mike's series called Where Art Meets Architecture, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. And if you'd like to be a part of our next landscape and cityscape critique, go to the link in the description and you can submit your photos right now.